G'day watchers, welcome back to the channel today. I am going back to Steinhardt. I can't remember when the last time I reviewed a Steinhardt from scratch. I think it's quite a while ago, but I'll put up a link here uh, to the last video. Uh, this one has been made available courtesy of Jeremy, local enthusiast and supporter who has kindly come forward to offer some of his pieces. So shout out to Jeremy. Thank you for offering this excellent piece. So let's just open up this typical faux leather box, Steinhardt up the top here. You've seen this before if you're interested in Steinhardt watches. Okay, so let's just take this off the cushion, put it aside and show you the watch that I'm reviewing, uh, which today is this very nice Steinhardt Ocean 39 Explorer, which is a Noman watch exclusives Norman watches in Singapore this is a collaboration so you cannot actually buy this from Steinhardt themselves it is actually only available uh, from Norman watches or I should say was only because uh, as of this current recording it is sold out you can't actually get this anymore unfortunately the sale price uh, was 499 USD uh, and in this case, it actually has a Steinhardt Jubilee bracelet. So this is actually a Steinhardt bracelet, not a third party. This watch normally comes with an oyster style bracelet, but Jeremy has swapped in this Jubilee, which is pretty darn nice. This one goes for 120 USD and I'll put links to all products that I can find below, of course. Okay, so let's just uh, talk about the movement in here. So the movement in this particular uh, piece is a 2824, so an Etta. Uh, 2824. Uh, in this case, it is an Elabore grade as are all the Steinhardts that I have reviewed on the channel. Excellently regulated. You can see um, the expected accuracy there and this is actually running plus one or two seconds per day uh, in the week that I have had it, which is very, very good. Steinhardt really do a very good job in regulating their movements. You will note that this uh, is a no date watch. Uh, of course, the 2824 usually does have a date, but they've chosen not to implement it in this uh, watch, which I think is, you know, is really a right decision, is a good decision on their part. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the case here. The case is 39 millimeters, right? It's in the name of the watch. It is a 39 millimeter 316L steel case. Uh, the thickness is 14 millimeters. So, you know, it's a little bit more than I expect. Uh, you know, you see larger diameter dive watches with thinner uh, profile. So this is a little bit on the thick side, thanks mainly to that protruding uh, case back that you can see there. Lug width, as you might expect, is 20 millimeters with a lug to lug distance, which is fairly modest between my thumbs of 47 millimeters. Uh, the overall weight uh, with a few links removed is 140 grams. So yes, uh, it is substantial, but by no means a heavy watch, at least not in my opinion. It's actually fairly comfortable to carry that amount of weight on the watch. All right, let's talk about finishing. So finishing wise, the top is longitudinal brushing. It transitions nicely into a polished side. So, you know, let you see uh, the sides there, which is polished. Um, and then uh, at the bottom is also polished underneath the lugs, but the case back, the very solid case back you can see there is circular brushed. Uh, just to point out a couple of other things about this case, so the lugs, as with other Steinhardt, are squared off, uh, as is those crown guards. You can see they're kind of squared off crown guards, so whereas you know the real Rolexes will usually round down the lugs as well as round down those crown guards here. So this is a little bit more of a flat profile as you see it uh, from the top here. With that screw down plain case back, you know, fairly plain case back, not many uh, details, certainly no decoration in the middle, but some details around the circumference there. Uh, with a screw down sign crown, so that typical Steinhardt S that you can see there, uh, this watch is actually rated at 300 meters. Now it says 100 meters on the dial, that's because that is kind of like a slavish homage to the watch that this uh, is inspired by, but this is actually engineered to be a 300 meter watch. Uh, the watch that this um, kind of follows is a, a vintage uh, Rolex 5513 Explorer dial watch, as I understand it, though I believe that's the actual watch uh, this uh, takes a lot of its cues from. So I'll try to put some shots uh, of vintage Rolexes on the side here for you, know, you guys to see where this kind of inspiration comes from. Okay, so let's talk about the dial now. So the dial here is really, um, I guess, where 
a lot of the love for this watch uh, comes into you know so it's a kind of a matte black explorer style dial so explorer meaning it's got you know just baton markers with 369 in that compact uh, or tri compax distribution and a triangle at 12 o'clock position it's printed fully uh, you know all around the dial there's no applied elements here in this kind of faux patina type of detail so you know just kind of like yellowed aged look that it has you know kind of again homaging those old rolexes uh, and pretty nicely done i must say including that open chapter ring around the outside uh, the steinhardt name as well as uh, submersible at the six o'clock position there uh, the hands here are as you can see gold tone mercedes handset and a full mercedes hands with the lollipop uh, seconds as well uh, in this case it's filled with super luminova all radium and it's on all the usual spots around the dial as well as the bezel pip and of course i'll show you a loom shot right here for you guys to appreciate how it looks like in the dial all right surrounding the dial is a 120 click unidirectional dive style bezel with uh, an aluminium insert and this bezel is pretty darn firm i gotta say so let you hear that now Okay, so it's so very firm. In fact, probably too firm uh, it, to a lot of people's preference. You know, this is an extreme firm bezel, and I think if you had gloves on, you might you might actually struggle to turn this. You know, how how firmly they've actually engineered this uh, particular bezel. Um, on top of that uh, uh, dial is a very nicely double domed sapphire crystal with internal anti-reflective coating and that's really how i like it uh, the ar inside rather than on the outside as well okay so let's just talk about the bracelet now so moving on to the bracelet this is a jubilee bracelet five piece per link of course for this typical uh, jubilee it's 20 millimeters tapering to 16 millimeters brush finish on the way uh, on the outside there they haven't gone for uh, polished center links like other jubilees might do uh, and it goes on to polished on the side it does have of course solid end links as you might expect from steinhardt and uh, just to show you it does have screw adjustments so uh, you know which is a good thing about all the steinhardt that i've had they've push for screw adjustments not just push pin uh, it does have the typical press metal class right uh, which is friction it doesn't have any uh, you know push button there for micro adjustments there fairly solid uh, arms but again a press metal type of keeper there uh, for the class slot and uh, this one usually as i mentioned comes in an oyster style uh, solid end link bracelet uh, that one is finished the same way brush at the top and polished on the sides okay and that's that's what you would expect from uh, the oyster bracelet same quality uh, exactly how this would be okay so let's just uh, put it on for the wrist shot now after describing the watch for you guys and there we have it you know very pleasing you know 39 millimeter case 47 millimeter lug to lug on my 17 centimeter wrist it fits very well i think this would fit any guy very well you know it's a vintage style and it's not big uh, as a dive watch goes and you know in terms of riding on the wrist, yes, it does ride slightly high because Steinhardt does make those lugs, you know, point fairly straight. And that case back is not the flattest that you can see. So there's a slight uh, highness on the ride there, but it's not too bad. That's how the Jubilee looks like. You know, for my cuff, I can get it under it without too much trouble. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, so what have I really liked about this watch? Look, I, I think it is an excellent uh, lovely vintage homage diver in 39 millimeters with again a really good ensemble of features so much like that Baltic I reviewed not so long ago uh, you know they've gone for the 39 millimeter sizing so smaller than the usual ones you see today uh, they've gone for drilled lux and a, a nicely domed crystal you know with, with some character there a no date layout so good on them for choosing no date on this uh, explorer dial uh, and really a fairly well executed patina dial now some people don't like patina dials because it's a little bit of falseness there i don't mind the way that they have done this it's a very well finished uh, case as well and you know as is typical for steinhardt you know and the bracelet as well is pretty darn well finished you know all these positives 
in this package here uh, for $4.99. I think you're getting a very good deal as you typically do with Steinhardt watches. Now, what are the weaknesses or the, the things of note? Firstly, um, you know, it's an unobtainium, right? It, you can't get this anymore. At least currently, they don't list it. It's out of stock. Uh, I don't have any information on whether it will come back into stock. And if it does, I don't think it's going to be any cheaper than 499 In fact, it probably will grow up in price. Uh, so if you want this right now, you have to buy it on the secondary market. Next thing to note is that Look, it's still a Rolex homage, so if you don't like Rolex homage watches, this isn't the watch for you. Uh, this one homage is kind of an obsolete uh, diver that is very hard to get your hands on. I understand those Rolexes are sought after and go for high prices, so probably not obtainable to most people. So I don't mind that this homage is something like that. Much like the Ocean Vintage Military, uh, people don't seem to mind that it will homage something you can't really get. Uh, today but again it is still an homage. Uh, the bezel I've explained is very firm, too firm for ease of use uh, so you know you, you, you might not like that. It might might come easier with uh, you know breaking in but currently it's very firm. Uh, the handset I'll just you know show that to you. You can go back to the macro shots here. The handset if you look at the minute hand and the second hand it looks like it goes all the way to the edge of the chapter ring there. I wonder uh, if it's been recycled. It looks like they've probably just grabbed that handset off a 40 millimeter watch or something like that. Uh, so that's not great. You know, they really should aim uh, to end the hands right at the edge of the inside of the, you know, the chapter ring there. This one kind of cuts into it. Uh, it. It does look a bit recycled. Okay, so this is something I've noted uh, with use of this watch. Not, not a make or break by any means. Uh, the clasps, I will mention again, remains the weakest point of Steinhardt watches. It's press metal, doesn't even have a push button. So, you know, if they're going to improve in the future, I imagine that this is a place where perhaps they could uh, aim at putting more uh, attention to. Um, and that's really it. That's all I have to say in terms of concerns about this watch. Nothing make or break. It's really an excellent package overall. So guys, let me know what you think about uh, this particular Steinhardt, the Ocean 39 Explorer, which is the Noman watch exclusive. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I'll catch you guys next time.